Hi, this is Shadi. Today's story is found in the book My Judo by Masahiko Kimura. It will be linked in the description below. So this story is a very important story. According to Kimura himself, it's the fight that saved his life. So the story goes back to 1942 when Kimura joined the Amaki Air Defense Unit. So he joined initially to serve his country. He had martial arts expertise and he wanted to offer his services. So in 1942, there was a class that was held by a Ju Kendo master. So if you are not familiar with Ju Kendo, it's the military art of simulating the fights with bayonets. So there is protective gear. They thrust each other. And at the time, they also grappled. So there was a class that was held by this master who Kimura kept his name anonymous for respect. The master was eighth degree black belt and he taught them attacking, offense and defense. And after the class, he asked uh, who between the unit members wants to fight him and nobody stepped forward. They were all afraid. And he heard some of the unit members saying things like, I cannot go and challenge him. He will kill me. And so the captain of the unit himself calls out for Kimura to step up to the challenge. And so what, what did Kimura do was step slowly to the front in order to think of a strategy or to have time to think of a strategy. So what happened was the fight would start and then the master started taunting him saying things like what are you waiting for thrust and so what Kimura did was faint a thrust and then throw the gun in his face and then as according to Kimura he tackled his knees and got him down to the ground so uh, once the Ju Kendo master was trying to deflect the flying gun with his own gun, Kimura lunged down for a tackle. So this is what I would say it was a morote gari or a reap with both hands. And this is what got the master down to the ground. And after that, he mounted him and then got on top of him, attempting to remove the protective gear uh, off of his head in order to strike him and finish him and by the time Kimura was on top of him the master was already asking for the fight to stop telling him wait wait and so the captain of the unit had to step in and stop the fight himself because he already knew that the fight was over and that Kimura had defeated him the master stands back up, tilts his head in embarrassment and leaves the scene quietly. Later after that fight, there was an announcement made uh, by the academy saying that whoever wants to volunteer, now is your chance. And so Kimura volunteered to go on the battlefield and serve his country. So. Anyone who volunteered at that time was given a five day vacation before they came back and you know, sent off to the battlefield. So he went to his uh, parents' house and then after he came back, the same captain of the unit asked him to join him for a meeting and there they had a glass of whiskey and then he started to talk to him saying that he already knows of him and of his amazing judo record and said that he himself the captain had trained uh, judo and at the kodokan and he would never beat kimura even though he himself was fourth degree black belt and because of his expertise he thought that kimura could serve the army in judo or teaching judo rather than going out on the battlefield and he said to him that i have a secret to tell you that you're going to be sent off to the Solomon Islands and there 
there is gonna be the B29 for sure and the odds of you winning or surviving is slim to none and I don't want that to happen to you so Kimura was very adamant on going there because he wanted to serve his country and he tried to reason with him and then he finally said to him my order is the Emperor's order you are not allowed to volunteer and there Kimura finally had to oblige because it was the Emperor's order and so he was not sent to the Solomon Islands and survived so this is why uh, the captain called for him to fight the master in the first place because he already knew of him so he wanted to see if he was truly what they were saying about him and luckily for Kimura on that day he stepped up and fought and he was very wise and he himself said that if I wanted to thrust and play his game or play uh, in his own domain I'm gonna lose for sure so what he did was feint a thrust throw the gun in his face and then go for a tackle um, this tactic is still very much alive today you see the kick and then followed by the double leg you see the Gracie's teaching it the wrestlers doing a jab followed by a single leg takedown or whatever it may be so it's a very legitimate tactic but it was done with the gun because of the circumstances of that fight so I'm so glad that Kimura was not allowed to go and he did not volunteer and his life was saved because we would not have the Elio Gracie and Kimura fight, we would not have the Santana and the Kimura fights, we would not have later on the uh, tutorials that, was, that were filmed uh, by him as an older man, you can still find them here on YouTube and so no, don't get me wrong, his legendary status would have been kept because he already had that uh, reputation and everyone knew of him. And so, uh, but it would have been far less. He wouldn't have written probably my judo. He wouldn't have written all those stories of the fights. There is also knife fights. There is also fights um, with the Americans when they were uh, in Japan after the war so many stories that have happened um, his technical expertise his uh, training routine all of it now we have so much more to work with and we are very fortunate that he did not die and i do agree with him it's the most important fight the fight that saved his life so if you have anything to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening